This is a UG dial type governor. We shall try to dive into its operation, with helping animations. This, we will do by breaking into smaller parts, by functionality. We have removed some of the important parts from this animation, in order to focus only on those parts, essential to understand its operation, like, the remote speed setting motor, the accumulators, the load limiter, etc. The numbers used for elaboration here are just for examples. We shall assume, our four-stroke generator engine runs steadily at 600 RPM, at 400 kilowatt load, and, at fuel rack reading of 12. Now, let us get down into some really fine details. Number 1. Speed sensing element, these are like the eyes of the governor, always monitoring the engine speed in real time. These are the starting point of all governor actions. The rotating ball weights are sensing engine speed, by rotating at high speed themselves, and the centrifugal force that they experience. Assuming engine runs at 600 rotations per minute in steady state, the speed sensing and regulating governor, has the duty of maintaining the engine RPM at 600. At 600 RPM of engine, the rotating ball weights rotates at a fixed angle, without any shift away, or towards the vertical axis. However, when engine runs up, to say, 620 RPM, the flyweights rotate at higher speed, and move further away from the axis of rotation. The opposite happens, when engine speed drops, to say, 580 RPM, flyweights, due to lower centrifugal force, comes closer to the axis. The flyweights, are linked to the rotating ball head, part number 23, by hinged links. These links acting as lever, press against the speeder spring, either lifting, or lowering the speeder rod which is not rotating. The speeder rod is connected to the pilot valve plunger at the bottom. It is important to note for clear understanding, that the rotating flyweights hold a fixed angle, at the engine rated RPM of 600. So, after a speed disturbance of the engine, to a lower, or higher RPM, the flyweights will move inwards or outwards, changing the angular orientation, will eventually come back to hold that same angular position once RPM of 600 is restored by this governor. Next, we discuss the pilot valve, coupled with pilot rod, inside the rotating pilot chamber. The pilot valve is linked with the speeder rod. This is the actuator of this control system, which is taking direct feedback from the flyweights. Any lift or lowering of this rod will open up the control port number 2 in the rotating pilot chamber. This control port will remain blocked, as long as the engine is running at 600 RPM. This means, that when the flyweights hold the fixed angular orientation that we discussed earlier, there is no vertical movement of the speeder rod, and port 2 remain blocked. This is a steady state equilibrium with no governor action. Let us directly link the pilot valve with the speeder rod, and see how this animates. As you can see, the rotating pilot chamber, interferes with our visibility of the pilot valve movement, while covering uncovering the ports, so I have stopped its rotation, but remember, this will always rotate, as long as engine runs. There will be no governor power output shaft movement, as long as the port 2 is covered. So, fuel racks will hold steady. Whereas, as long as the control port, port number 2 remain uncovered, fuel rack will continue to move, either increasing or decreasing fuel, depending on lower than 600 RPM, or higher than 600 RPM, of the engine. But will this setup work? The answer is no, it will not. To answer the question, as to why this will not work, we need to address another aspect here. There is always a lag, or delay in engine RPM response, inherent with all engine governor system, with respect to the rack setting, or power piston setting, at an instant while there is a change or movement of the racks, either increasing or decreasing fuel. This lag originates from inertia of the engine against rotational acceleration, or deceleration. Engine, with all of its rotational mass, 
will need time to change speed whenever there is a change of fuel admission. So, an increase in fuel, when port 2 is uncovered, will not instantaneously bring up engine RPM. Engine needs time to accelerate, to reach the desired RPM. During this time lapse, port 2 remain open, and fuel setting will continue to increase. Let us understand this with an example. Say, engine running at 600 RPM, load of 400 kW, gets a sudden additional 10 kW load. Fuel rack setting at 12. Sequence as following. Engine RPM drops to 580 RPM. Flyweights come closer to the axis of rotation. Speeder rod lowers as a result, resulting in lowering of the pilot valve. Control port number 2 opens up and connects pressure oil to control port 1. As soon as control port is uncovered, power piston moves to increase fuel. But engine has not yet finished its accelerating run up, it is still accelerating, so pilot valve would just pass over the control port 2, will not stop here to block the port. However, because of the lag in the instantaneous rack position while increase, had we waited for a while when the racks were at 14, giving engine time to complete its rotational acceleration, after the lapse of that lag time of response, engine RPM, would have come back to 600 at a rack setting of 14. But, since the control port 2 remained uncovered at 14 rack setting, because engine RPM has still not reached 600, power piston continued to increase rack. So, as a result, while rack setting of 14 was sufficient to have RPM back at 600, now after a lapse of acceleration time of engine, we have rack positioned at 17, this resulted in increase of engine RPM to 610. As soon as 610 RPM reached, flyweights move further away from axis, lifts up the pilot valve, this time in opposite direction, power output shaft of governor moves to lower fuel setting, again, the cycle of correction starts in opposite direction. This phenomenon is called hunting, hunting about the desired set point. Important to note, that this lag is transient in nature, that is, the lag vanishes after the lapse of the lag time. Also, note that the lag is independent of load, in fact engine just after startup, running on no load, will also show this hunting behavior about set point of 600 RPM. It will appear, whenever there is a disturbance of RPM, away from 600, and vanish subsequently, once engine runs steadily at 600. So, it is evident from above, pilot valve directly taking feedback from the rotating flyweights, alone, cannot give a stable operation. We need to give another feedback to the pilot valve, of a different kind, simultaneously for its positioning, which can take care of this transient lag. This feedback must have two characteristics. One the feed to the pilot valve, must cover the time lag, or gap between the instantaneous fuel rack reading and the engine RPM during power piston travel while increasing, or decreasing fuel. It must be able to bring the pilot valve that extra bit closer to cover the control port, in advance, before the lag period lapses. So, this new feedback will work in opposite to pilot valve movement, due to flyweight's positioning. Its objective is to keep the pilot valve closer to cover port 2, earlier than could be possible by flyweight feedback alone. 2. This extra traveling input must vanish after the lapse of the time lag, as if there was no such input that ever existed. Enter the compensating mechanism. Compensates for the time lag, that engine takes to accelerate or decelerate due to its rotational inertia, when fuel rack changes. Flyweights are blind to this time lag they see only the instantaneous rotational speed and sets pilot valve accordingly. A second simultaneous feedback to pilot valve is achieved, by disconnecting the direct speeder rod and pilot valve connection, instead, a new floating lever 31 is introduced. At the right end of this lever, is pivot 1, where speeder rod gives feedback from flyweights, as before, in our example, but now, there is a new, Pivot 2, where, output from dash pot 2 piston is connected. Pilot valve is now connected at an intermediate position of this lever 31. 
Now, with this new setup, pilot valve can be manipulated from two ends of this lever, independently of each other, thus ready to receive two separate inputs to position the port covering, uncovering. The two dash pots combinedly make this second feedback to the pilot valve. The first dash pot, with a larger diameter, takes input from power piston instantaneous position. This input is used to position the second dash pot, thinner in diameter, which now works to give that little bit of extra nudge to the pilot valve movement towards the control port number 2, to reach there earlier, to cover up for the time log during engine speed change. There is also, a bleed screw, between these two connecting dash pots, for finer adjustments of the dash pot 2 piston travel. A fully open screw will drain all hydraulic oil out of the dash pot 1 during its downward stroke, or suck up oil from sump during upward stroke, this setting will make dash pot 2 piston movement zero, thus, as if, the compensating system is not working altogether for governor. On the other extreme, if this screw is tightened completely, large piston movements will be seen in dash pot 2, thus, imparting a large compensation action to the pilot valve. Depending on the engine, this screw is adjusted somewhere in between, to the desired set point, between, a vigorously oscillating engine RPM, when screw is fully open, to most sluggish engine response to rapid load change when this screw is fully closed to its maximum. The compensation feedback controlled vanishing act is accomplished by the two centering springs of the dash pot 2, along with set point of the bleed screw orifice. These springs will ultimately get the piston back to the original, or zero position after every compensation stroke, such that, feedback from this compensating mechanism to the pilot valve vanishes. The last component we now need to elaborate is the speed drooping mechanism. This mechanism is latched onto the governor, by the speed droop lever 3, taking feedback from the power piston positioning, and giving a slight decrease of compression to the speeder spring from the top, when fuel rack is increasing when there is addition of extra load, from a previously steady load running. Now, there is a slight difference of force on the speeder rod, which were earlier balanced push-up force due to flyweights, and push-down force due to spring tension were earlier equal at steady point, when control port 2 of pilot chamber was blocked. This set point now slightly shifts, pilot valve moves a little bit upwards now, drains a small amount of hydraulic oil out of power piston, fuel racks decrease by a small amount as compared to a situation when there was no speed droop present, engine RPM drops by a small amount, generator sheds out some load. This helps in load sharing when two generators run in parallel. In another way, this action can be seen as equivalent to a small adjustment of engine speed, to lower RPM, when additional kilowatt load is added to engine. 